Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Reading Bear, and I hope you are ready for some more stories. And today, we'll take a look at some new I don't work here lady content. If you enjoyed my content, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and post some bear emojis in the comment. And now, let's dive right into the stories. The first story is titled, Park in our driveway, get a naked man to argue with college a bunch of guys rent a beat up old house in town next to a daycare problem is the parents picking up and dropping off park in our driveway we argue with the owner of the daycare every day she doesn't care so one day i begin parking behind the parents who are parked in my driveway this infuriates the daycare owner we go back and forth and usually i go out and move my car so the parents can get their car out one day, though, I've just had it. I worked most of the night, had early morning classes, and I have 20 minutes to shave shower and get ready for my second job this afternoon. I get home and sure enough parents are in our driveway, again. So I park behind them and go inside. Get in the shower and when I get out the daycare owner is beating on the door loud enough to shake the wall. I go downstairs wrapped in a towel and open the door, she burst into the middle of the living room and screams at me. While she is screaming I take the towel off and calmly dry my hair. I am buck fucking naked. She stops screaming long enough to realize she's standing next to a naked college student, screams something about calling the cops and bolts for the door. It doesn't open. In her haste to leave she's locked the door instead of unlocking it. Now she's stuck with a naked man. I tell her I have to have the key, true, to unlock the door and the key is upstairs on my dresser. I leave her looking like she's about to have a heart attack. I take the longest time to go upstairs and get dressed and get the key. When I come back to the living room she's white as a ghost. I unlock the door and say, it sucks to be stuck and not able to leave, right? Fast forward about 20 minutes and when I'm leaving a cop is parked in front of the house. I chat with them through the car window. I explain the situation and they chuckle. Did you invite her in? No, I tell them, she barged into my house. Well it's not a crime to be naked in your own house. Her problem for violating your privacy. I'd love to say this rectified the situation, but it didn't. We never found a way to stop parents from parking in our driveway. But it was fun for a few minutes to freak a stuck up, mean ass middle aged woman. The next story is titled, I'm the comedian, but you're the joke. I do stand up comedy sometimes. I was performing at a bar restaurant deal and was sitting in the back taking care of some emails waiting for my set time. I went to the bar to get a drink, had a chat with the bartender for a few minutes, then got the signal I had 5 minutes till show, so went back. When I got to the back room I realized I'd left my phone on the bar so ran out again to collect it. Enter Karen, not her real name, of course. At a table just left of dead center facing the stage. Right by the back entrance I'd been popping in and out of all night. In a big group of six or seven people but even in my brief forays out, I could hear her shrill voice dominating their conversation. I guess here is as good a place as any to mention I was wearing a yellow sweatshirt and cargo shorts, the servers there were all black. Karen. Sir, sir, excuse me, sir. Me. What's up? Karen. Can you check on our food please? All we ordered were some wings and it's been like half an hour already. Me. Your server can help you with that, I'm not a waiter. Karen. What? Oh. Dish boy, line cook, whatever. You work here, so just when you go back there ask about my food. Me. Oh, no, you see I'm. Karen. No I get it. You aren't a waiter, but do you work here? Me. Kind of. Let me explain. Someone in her party. I don't think he's a waiter. Karen. Shut it, okay, I've got this. You work here, you can bring me my food. Just a quick lil. You know. Trot trot trot, carry carry. Boom. Done. Me. I can't do that. Karen. Ungodly shriek, grunt, shrunt why he newt. Others in her party. Karen, oh my gosh, quiet down. They tried to wave me away. I was weighing in my mind whether walking away had the higher chance of getting me fired from future gigs there or staying and getting into with her did. 
I was just going down the stay and get into it with her track. When the MC gets up there and goes, now a special treat for our patrons tonight, local comedian. So I just stop myself, lock eyes with Karen, walk backwards to the stage, unflinching. I grab the microphone, her table is cracking up realizing what's happened. And I say. Well I'd hope to do a show for you tonight folks but looks like that won't be possible, apparently I've been reassigned. I start riffing about people who think you work there when you don't and accuse you of lying and how absurd a concept that is. But then it's too perfect. The waitress is coming out with wings and headed straight for her table. I know the waitress, I've performed here before. So I transition and I'm just like, you caught me lady. Can't hide anymore. And I grab the wings from the waitress and I'm like, ooh, Donna, I see you trying to hone in on my section, can't you see this is my table? And all throughout the rest of the bit I would go over and fill their water glasses, bust their plates. Whenever I hit a dry spot I was like, alright hold on, got to check in with my customers. Can I interest you in any dessert? How we doing over here? Speak into the mic please. Karen hated it, but the others at her table were dying laughing and would even sometimes flag me down for water or appetizers. The set ends and Karen goes to file a complaint, her friends or co-workers whoever, try to stop her from doing so and some leave the venue because of her. A couple stay back to try and defend me and I told them not to worry because the manager and I were cool. But they got to see for themselves. The manager is an old school Armenian guy and he has no tolerance for this bullshit. This particular venue was a biker bar before the area got gentrified, so he's used to dealing with way rowdier customers than Karen. So she's going off about mistreatment at the hands of his employee and how I'm probably not licensed to be a food server, lol, and that she wanted something done. The manager plays dumb just to see her get worked up and goes, who? This guy? Even though the entire floor saw me give her a hard time. Shrunting, yes. Manager. He doesn't work for me. Karen. What the fuck are you talking about? Manager. It's 11.30 p.m. He worked for me from 10 p.m. until 11 p.m. That's what I paid him for as a freelancer. That's over. Now he's just some guy. Karen. Well when he was working for you he was rude and abstinent. Me. What? On stage? Of course I was abstinent, it's not that kind of show. Karen, shrunting, you know what I mean. See? He's making fun of how I talk. Manager. He's a comedian, that's what I paid for. Karen. I was a customer treated poorly in your establishment. He was acting as a server here when he served me and I want a refund on my meal or at the very least, turning dramatically to me, Gollum voice, an apology. Me. All right, I might have been a little rude towards the end there, but in my defense, she didn't tip. Manager. Is that true? Did you not tip? Karen. Why would I have tipped the comedian? Manager. I thought you said he was acting as a server? Karen was a little tipsy at this point so somehow drunk logic convinced her smashing a glass would get her point across. All it did was get the manager to have her bounced. Her remaining friends apologized to the manager and said they barely knew her and they hoped this wouldn't mean they couldn't come in there anymore, without her, and he was super nice about it. I told them I hoped I hadn't put a damper on their night and they said they can't wait to tell everyone else about Karen's outburst. So, I don't have a career as a waiter in my future. Kudos to all you service workers who put up with these insufferable people day in and out. The next story is titled, He Made an Official Complaint. I don't work there. This happened a couple of months ago. Backstory, I'm a youth worker and part of my job involves taking clients to a bowling alley. I do this a few times a week, sometimes more than once a day, and usually at odd times, 9am Monday bowling anyone? So the place is basically my second office and we have a good relationship with the proprietors. During the quiet hours, they only have two staff working. One in the office, front desk, cafe three separate locations BTW, and one behind the scenes. It means that often there's a bit of standing around waiting when the front of house staff member is in a different area. Myself and the other weekday regulars, mostly senior bowlers, are used to it. It actually works well for me because part of what I'm doing there is teaching my clients social skills and coping strategies, 
so having to occupy yourself and be patient and polite is a good teaching moment. My client and I have finished bowling, and we're sitting at the cafe eating and talking quietly when a man approaches the unattended cafe and immediately starts huffing and pacing restlessly. I side-eye him, but keep talking to the kid. A minute later he comes and looms over our table and says, excuse me, in an aggressive tone. Now I've got my calm neutral face on but inside I've started gibbering because. I hate confrontation. This guy is actually massive. The kids I work with are the zero to kick your ducking teeth in kind. And they often get very protective of their workers, in a sweet but ducked up kind of way. So if this guy tries to start something, there's a good chance there will be red and blue flashing lights in my immediate future. Yes? I inquired politely, keeping one eye on the kid, one hand on my phone, and a vapid smile on my face. How about you do your ducking job? He leaned down over the table. His breath was as unpleasant as the rest of him. I was surprised, because sitting at a bowling alley eating curly fries with a 15-year-old at 10 a.m. on a Tuesday was my job, and I was doing it well thank you very much. I was also alarmed because said 15-year-old has become very still and very tense. Not good. I moved back in my seat and resumed the vapid smiling. Oh, sorry, I don't work here. Sometimes you have to wait a minute for someone to see you and come over, but otherwise maybe try the front desk? Well you're dressed like you ducking work, air. He leaned over more and jabbed, jabbed. He jabbed me, my chest. The staff at this bowling alley wear black trousers and violently orange polo shirts that match the violently orange walls. Awful. I'm glad I don't drink because going in there with a hangover would kill me. I was wearing baggy hippie pants, my purple manic pixie dream tarantula tee, and a sparkly sequin backpack. And a lanyard with the word, staff, printed on it. I held up the company ID card at the end of the lanyard, which identified me as an employee of the non-profit I work for. No, sorry, I work for, company name. We're customers here. Now if you don't mind, you're being very rude. Me, trying to role model, terrified. I smiled my best, everything is fine, smile to the kid eyeing the cutlery bucket. Don't talk to me like that you little idiot. I want three beers and some ducking wings. He actually smacked the table with his hand. I looked over to the main area. Oh goody, he has friends. I leaned back as far as I could, the wall was behind me, tables either side, and him blocking my exit. The kid stood up. Bad. Staff member spotted us and started rushing over. Good. We had a time for a few rounds of, I want to speak to your manager. I don't work here though, please let me out, before the actual manager of the bowling alley reached us. He pulled the guy away so I could get up, but dude wants to speak to my manager and won't let up. Manager says, I am the manager here. Dude. You're her manager? Manager. No, she doesn't work here. Dude, to me. I want to speak to your manager now. At this point I figured, why not, handed him one of our company business cards, and said, ask for, my manager's name. He turned away to dial the number and I grabbed the kid and whispered, now watch him make a dick of himself. Kid laughs and relaxes a bit. Thank duck. And the three of us stand in a row and watch this dipshit call my actual manager and complain that I wouldn't serve him beer and chicken wings. My manager actually took the complaint on an official form and made me sign it when I got back to the office. Meanwhile, dude is banned. The bowling alley gave the kid a huge pile of free arcade tokens in apology, and I was able to get him to give me back the knife he stole before I dropped him home. Wins all round. The next story is titled, Lady is reporting me to the medical board. I'm an architect. I work in an architecture firm, in a large building that also contains many other types of professional offices. The receptionist for my firm is on another floor. My office is on an upper floor, in a corner, so it's not a logical place for people to go first when they come to our building and don't know where they're going. Nevertheless, it has a door directly to a main corridor, so lost people occasionally knock on it, which is why we have a sign on it with the name of our firm and directing people to our receptionist on the third floor. Alas the sign did not deter this middle-aged impatient lost lady and her husband from knocking on my door. Lady. Is this the doctor's office? Me. 
No, this is an architecture firm. Lady. How do I get to the doctor's office? Me. There are building directories in the stairs and at the elevator. I start to give her directions to stairs and elevator but she interrupts. Lady, getting huffy and impatient and pushing her way past me right into the middle of my office. Why can't you just tell me where the doctor's office is? Me. I'm sorry but there are a lot of offices in this building, including at least 10 doctor's offices and I don't know their floors or office numbers. Lady. Can't you call and find out? Me. I'd be happy to let you use my phone. Lady. Why can't you call? Me. Sensing I'm not going to get rid of her unless I call somebody, what's the doctor's name? Do you have the number? Lady. I don't remember his name. I have a 2.15 appointment. I'm going to be late. Note that this is not an elderly woman, and I just wasn't getting the sense that this was a confused old person with a memory issue. But still I'm trying to be nice and helpful, even if just to get her out of my office. Me. I'm sorry but without a name or number I don't think I can call the doctor's office for you. Maybe I can Google this address and see what doctor's offices show up, and that will jog your memory. Lady. I don't have time for this. Call the building manager. I explained to the woman that I don't have contact info for building management, and there's no staffed main office in this building. We're back to there's nothing I can do except suggest that she walk down the hall and check the building directory at the stairs. Her husband is trying to drag her in that direction, but she's not having it. Lady. You are the worst receptionist. Businesses don't know how to get good people these days. I'm going to tell the doctor about you. Me. I'm sorry but I'm not the receptionist and I don't work for your doctor. I'm an architect, you're in my office. In case that isn't obvious, from the fact that the door opens directly into my small, messy office filled with drawings. Our firm's receptionist is on the third floor, as the sign on my door says. Lady. Well why didn't you say so? I will go wait down there. Me. Wait for what? We're an architecture firm. Our receptionist works for the architecture firm. We have nothing to do with the doctor's offices or any other companies in the building. Lady. You call her and tell her I'm on my way down there. At this point her husband seems to be grasping that I and my office and my firm have nothing to do with her doctor whose name escapes her, and starts trying to explain it to her. She brushes him off and yells at me again to call my receptionist. I dial our receptionist, with the lady still standing there, and say that a couple is on their way down, but that they are looking for a doctor's office in the building and I hope that they will read the building directory in the stairs on their way down. Lady. Well, I never. I have never before actually heard that phrase used in real life. I thought it was reserved for caricatures of uptight entitled old women on TV. Like Nellie Olson's mother. She flounced off down the hall, that's like stomping, but floatier because she was suspended by hot air, dragging her husband. I thought that since they had to use the stairs or elevator to get to our reception area, they would see the directory on their way down, and it would jog their memory as to which doctor they were looking for, and it would tell them where to find that doctor. But no, she did find her way down to pester our receptionist, and told her that I was a horrible employee, and that she was reporting me to the state medical board. The next story is titled, Entitled Old Woman Grabs Autistic Kid. This story is kinda different, in the way that I, employee, witnessed a autistic young man, maybe 14 years old, get caught up in some crazy lady IDWHL situation. Let me set the scene for ya. I, working as door greeter watching out for lost customers and folks with returns, working in lawn and garden section, I see this autistic young man, I guess he is autistic, as he seems predominantly focused on his action and kinda has the actions of an autistic individual. This young man is sorting and moving potted flowers around putting them in a very specific order, matching colors, size of pots, and height of the flowers themselves, doing an amazing job at it too I may add. He is bothering no one and most folks are just noticing him doing a bang up job, but this one old crone of a woman sees him, working. She stands behind this young man arms folded and tapping her foot. At first I was thinking maybe it was her son or someone she was shopping with, but the next thing she did proved to me I was mistaken. She clears her throat in that dreaded fashion we all know, ahem. Excuse me you need to help me. 
The young man pays her no mind, continuing with his task, she doesn't like this, she clears her voice and replies louder. You are not listening to me, you are going to help me now. Before I can walk to her and ask her what she needs she reaches out and grabs this young man by the right arm just above his elbow. I guess the sudden action of this and the young man's condition caused him to spin around and jerk his arm away from this lady. And the sudden movement startled the old woman causing her to step backwards and lose her balance causing her to sit down on her butt. It was like in slow motion watching her go from standing to sitting on the ground. By the time I reached the young man to see if he was okay, his mother had shown up and was asking what had happened. Before I could say anything the woman who had caused this was up and berating this young man. Saying he attacked her and she will have him fired and arrested. Meanwhile this young man was almost crying and his mother was shocked. I told the mom to take her son and calm him down, that he has done nothing wrong and just make sure he is okay. Crazy old women didn't like that I took his side, she began to lie and tell me she was the victim and she didn't do anything, that the employee, young man, attacked her. I told her not so kindly. She was a liar and I had witnessed the whole incident. The young man you forcibly grabbed does not work here and you assaulted him. By now a crowd has gathered, and the crazy woman has noticed that no one is giving her looks that they believe her side of the story. She just puts her head down and walks quickly out the store. When I turned to check on the young man and his mother she was smiling at me and was thanking me for my help, she shops here regularly and the young man likes to arrange the flowers, it's calming to him, I express my regrets about the whole incident, the young man walks over to me and pats my shoulder once and goes back to the flowers, the mom informed me that was the equivalent of a high five from him. That was it, then they were gone. If this story doesn't qualify for this sub, mods feel free to delete. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel and post some bear emojis in the comments.